Hi, it's a dynamic duo again, uh, Shackleton and Paul. And of course, you realize that I'm taking great risk having this guy sitting on my lap because I'm going to spend the next hour after I finish this video getting cat, cat hairs off my suit, which, um, you know, which I'll be bringing with me to, to uh, Madrid. And um, I have to check in with the airline and see, see how I can get this guy there. Um, yeah, right. Um, I'm joking. That's a joke in case you didn't, ugh, didn't realize it. So I'm continuing off on my previous um, videos, talking about the COP and some of the things that I'll presenting. I showed you in the last video um, the scientist warning paper, where there's lots of metrics showing what we're doing, you know, how everything's increasing sort of on a sharp slope upward, and then there's what's happening with the climate. And this is, uh, this is my website, of course. You can donate here and say for COP25 conference or here um, on this GoFundMe site, which will be linked to on my next blog on my website. Um, and it's to support my expenses, which I'm paying out of pocket to go to the conference. So let me go back to um, where I left off in the last, um, last, at the end of the last video. And this is, these are some of the images that I'll be um, using um, in, 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 COP, um, in, in COP events. So this is a very, this is a, I love the way this is depicted. So this is CO2 concentration in parts per million. And this is um, what's um, happening to change the CO2 concentration. So in 1870, 288 parts per million in the atmosphere. Since then, we've burned 92, we've added 92 parts per million of CO2 to the atmosphere from our coal burning. We've had 70 added 70 from oil burning, and we've added 30 from gas. That's natural gas, plus six from cement, the construction industry, and land use changes, cutting down forests, replacing them with um, asphalt roads, cities, etc., and also cutting down forests that have, are huge carbon sinks, replacing them with agriculture. We've added 88. Okay, now the level in the atmosphere hasn't gone up here to 550, okay, because there's been an increase in the land sinks. There's, there's CO2 being captured in the land. There's CO2 being captured in the oceans. And that brings us down. There's a gap here because we were at 403 ppm in 2016. Now we're over 411. When, whereas CO2 used to increase two parts per million in the atmosphere and then 2.5 parts per million on average per year. You know, now it's often over three parts per million increase per year, which is, uh, which is, which is terrible. It's awful huge rate of rise. I talked about uh, how much heat in the ocean is going into the ocean as opposed to in the land and atmosphere. This is the Earth's total heat content buildup over time from 1950 to now. And you can see that the vast majority of the heat, the extra heat captured by the Earth has gone into the oceans. In fact, it's over 90, 95 percent, you know, 97, as high as 97 percent I've seen going in and heating the oceans. This is the part that we feel on the land. This is the increased temperatures and the heat waves and stuff. It's just from this small amount of heat. So when this heat comes out of the ocean, we're in for a heap of trouble, obviously. This is a very good um, image showing uh, the per capita carbon emissions, uh, which is per person per year. So here we are. This is North America here. 6.3 billion tons of CO2 or 18% of all emissions has come from North America. Um, that we've got 5% of the global population in North America, 18% of the emissions. This is Europe right here. Europe is about 7.6 tons of CO2 per person per year. It's got 10% of the population and 16% of the global emissions. Here we are um, in, uh, well, Oceania is a little slice here. It's this little brown slice here. 11 tons per CO2 per person. This is like Australia, New Zealand, you know, in that region. 0.5% of the population, 1% of the emissions. Um, and here we got Latin America and the Caribbean, and 9% uh, of the population, 12% of the emissions. Here we have Asia, 60% of the global population, half of the emissions. And Africa, 1.1 ton of CO2 per person per year. 16% of the population in the globe, only 4% of the emissions. So you can see the huge inequi in, you know, inequable 
inequitable amounts of CO2 being produced per person depending on where people are by region. This is a famous um, image showing, um, showing uh, this is August, July to August, hot and cold areas around the world, 50, 1955, 20, it goes up to 2011. It shows how the earth is heating. It shows how much of the heat, where the heat is going. This is from uh, a James Hansen paper from a number of years ago. CO2 levels, I think most of you have seen this type of curve, so I won't dwell on it. This curve here uh, was, came to the light of day recently. It was um, in an Exxon oil study uh, saying what would happen with uh, burning oil to what that would do to the climate over time. And these are their projections. This is the most probable temperature increase, this line here. This is the, the most, the, the maximum they thought would happen, temperature increase here. And here's what's happened up to 2017. This is updated, the blue line. So it's showing up the, to the maximum. So Exxon knew, they clearly knew about climate change many, many decades ago. CO2 emissions from fossil fuels and land use, that's total emissions here. And exponential growth, if you fit an exponential growth curve, 1.65% a year, you get the dashed line. This is in billion tons of CO2 equivalent. And this was, a, you know, this is sort of IPCC first assessment, Kyoto, Paris, you know, and so on. Okay, so we, we know, we, you know, we've tracked this for a long period of time. Global carbon budget in 2018, um, you know, where the carbon's going, what's, what it's doing, where it's coming from. Uh, things like that. Many of you have seen this. Um, this is like the earth here in a stabilized zone and can we slip into hothouse earth? We cross tipping points and things go sour. You know, we, we, we're going to go into a hothouse earth and, you know, how would, would we possibly be able to extract ourselves from that by solar radiation management, carbon dioxide removal, slashing emissions. Uh, hard to say if the emissions, it, it, it's very difficult to do if the emissions uh, far exceed uh, human emissions, the emissions from the earth, from the tundra, from the oceans, from the methane, you know, the methane, the, et cetera, et cetera. So it's better to apply these technologies, CDR, SRM, et cetera, slashing emissions, three-legged bar stool to keep us in a stable, stable zone. This is another Hansen image, very famous. This is summer temperature anomalies or you could do rainfall anomalies, or you could do extreme weather events, or you could do anything here. Basically, you've got a bell curve of events, hot events, cold events. This is one standard deviation, two, three, standard bell curve. What's happening is it's shifting. So here's where we are, 2001 to 2011, it's shifting. Okay, a lot more hotter events, much fewer colder events, more extreme weather events, okay? It's just the statistics of the weather has changed. We've changed the chemistry of the atmosphere, and oceans and the statistics of the weather through by no surprise changes. You know, I like this graph. This is again showing the per capita emissions, um, household CO2 per capita tons. Um, you know, the top, the richest, the top 10%, the bottom 50%, the bottom 40%, the average. And you can see, you know, 50, 50 tons of CO2 per year on average, the, the wealthiest 10% in the USA. Um, and you can see the, the uh, you know, the different um, levels of income. People, you know, with different levels of income have hugely, vastly different amounts of emissions. So this, this really gets to the site of, to the core of what our society is. This is uh, the year and, and, you know, different scenarios, different um, simulations on what happens if we reduce emissions and pull CO2 from the air and uh, maybe deploy SRM to keep the Arctic cool. But this is where we're heading right now, business as usual. I'm not gonna show you this. This is a timeline, you know, I'd have to uh, spend some time to go through it. But it's that, it's that long timeline from XKCD or whatever, the comic. This is one of my favorites still, you know, it's old. What if it's a big hoax and we create a better world for nothing? You know, and here we go. Here, look, we've got energy independence. We're preserving rainforest, sustainability, green jobs, livable cities, renewables, clean water, air, healthy children, et cetera, et cetera. And this guy's here. There's always naysayers. What if it's a big hoax and we create a better world for nothing? Right? It's just, it's, it's perfect. 
Stockholm Resilience Institute, they've done lots of stuff on these boundaries, these environmental ceilings, you know, so, you know, and you can look at these different, here's where we are right now, this is, in, this is society, this is a safe and just space for humanity, you know, we have water, we have food, we have health, we have gender equality, social equality, energy, job, we have a voice, we have resilience, education, income, right in this space. And then we go outside these safe boundaries and we lose our biosphere. We get, we're having abrupt rapid climate change. Novel entities, what's that? Uh, stratospheric ozone depletion, atmospheric aerosol loading, ocean acidification, biogeochemical flows, freshwater use problems, land system changes. We basically start losing the carrying capacity of the earth. We're just on a rock going through space, and that rock is supporting everything, all of us, and who we are and what we do, our entire societies. And if we destroy the ecosystems which we're doing of that rock, it, it'll just become a bare rock again, and uh, none of us will be around. This is uh, global income deciles, so the richest 10%, the poorest 1%, etc. cetera. Um, the richest 10%, sorry, the poorest 10% here, and this, the richest 10% are responsible for almost half of the total lifestyle, lifestyle consumption emissions. So the richest 10% are creating 49% of all the fossil fuel emissions from consumption. Then the, the 10 to 20% richest are producing 19% and so on. So when you go to the, the poorest, to the, to the, to the 10%, they're only, putting, they're only contributing to 1% of all the emissions. So you can see this final shape you know, very, very clear what's going on. More th um, projections and gigatons of CO2 versus year, different pledges and the one and a half pathway, two pathway. Um, again, similar sort of thing here, historical emissions and what we have to do. This is, uh, this is very interesting. If you think about this, um, this is global mean surface warming. This is temperature. You know, this is a maximum two degrees from the Paris Agreement. 1.5 here. You know, here's, here, this is a lifetime of a person. So here we are, somebody born in the you know, early 60s, you know, lives perhaps uh, 80 years plus. Okay, this is the, so they see temperature from here up to here. This is what our kids, where our kids, say born around 2000 see. This is what their ki our kids' kids or grandkids would see here. And this is what our grandparents would see back here. Our grandparents would be back in this region, right? So the idea of climate restoration, the idea of getting restoring a healthy climate, a healthy planet, okay? Uh, go, to, go to Healthy Climate Alliance, okay? HCA, Healthy Climate Alliance. Look at their climate restoration white paper. Um, and uh, they're going to be at the COP, and I've done some stuff with them. I'm on all their email lists, etc. They're led by Peter Fiakowski, some very interesting work. I mean, this is actually a horrifying graph. I've had people tell me that if I look at this graph for too long, I start bursting out into tears, right? They look at their kids. They just look at the future here. So we need intergenerational equity. There is no reason that our grandkids should not enjoy the same climate and stability of the earth systems that our grandparents, which would be back here, enjoyed. There's no reason for intergenerational equity, so we've got to get our SHIT together, you know, which is a big part of why I'm going to the COP25. And this is an also, this is a sort of a historical graph going back 20,000 years, again, temperature anomaly and showing, you know, what we've lived through and where we are right now. This is two degrees of warming. This is uh, what we can expect in the future. Um, with the warming of 0.8, the current temperature is 0.1 Celsius above the Holocene maximum, and this number is now more like one. And uh, during an El Nino, uh, when conditions are bad, we're actually, this number is more like 1.5 already. Okay, and uh, of course, one needs props when one goes to a conference. It's a bit of a show, so I picked up this um, umbrella. You know, the theme of money is, is the root of money is the root of all evil. You heard that expression, you know, closer up of the umbrella. This is a good quote I like. Yesterday's history, tomorrow's mystery, today is a gift. Eleanor Roosevelt and 
We give our children two things. One is roots, the other is wings. We want them to have a future. Thanks for listening.